Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for actually an early episode of Let's Make a Game. In the previous episode we dynamically established a bunch of properties for our stars using arrays and it has been pointed out to me that there is actually a better solution. So I decided to have a closer look at DS lists and also DS grids and I have to say holy schmoly macaroni. I was able to improve upon this code so so much, you guys have no freaking idea. Programming can be so much fun and I'm actually glad I'm sharing this with you guys so you can point these things out to me and I can improve. So I decided instead of this star array script, you can see it is now in the unused folder, I made a new script called star grid and of course we have to execute that within our buttons thingy-majingy here. As soon as we click the new game functionality we want to execute the star grid instead of the arrays. The same thing counts for the continue button, this is actually a functionality we are also going to program in today, so the player will be able to actually load a previous save game. So you can see I'm also executing the script right here, however right here we have the new game equals false option. One more thing that I want to point out is that with this new system we are actually going to dynamically load in all of the stars and that means I was able to get rid of all the stars except one single star object that is going to be our blank slate to populate with variables. This actually also allows me to set any amount of stars. So we can go with 100 stars or with 30 stars, it doesn't really matter, the user will be able to adjust it to their liking. So with that out of the way, let's dive right into the coding. The star grid script, just as a reminder, is on no object, it is being called as soon as we click the buttons, right? So first things first, whether or not we press new game or continue, we want to clean up all of the stars that are currently here. So let's call it clean up stars. Actually thinking about it, we only want to delete the stars if we are already in the game room. In the startup room there are no stars. So if room equals room game, then we want with the obj star to instance destroy. Easy as that. Now since we only have one star object and no matter which star you are looking at, it's always the same object with different parameters, we can simply destroy it like that. Now let's get to the more interesting part. We want to initialize the new grid. Now just to show you what the grid actually is, I made this little graphic here. In our case, we want to have some kind of an order for the stars. So for instance, this would be star 0, then star 1, then star 2, etc, etc. Then on the top we have different values, for instance here we have the name of the stars or you know the, the let's say the name number because you can actually only save numbers as far as I know, you cannot actually save strings in grids, at least I wasn't able to successfully retrieve strings, only numbers. So this would be the name and number, then for instance here we have the image index or so, oh man, oh man my handwriting. Anyways, you get the basic gist, index and then uh, for instance we have the x position, then we have the y position and maybe we have some kind of a, a life status. So I would want to save all these values dynamically. So for instance for the star number 0, maybe the name is... Uh, <laughs> Sorry that was weird. And the image index could be anything between 0 and 9, so maybe the image index is 5. Then the x position is anything in the room, so maybe it is 120 and the y position is maybe 504. The alive status in the beginning will always be true, so it's gonna be a 1. And all of these variables we want to save for all of the various stars. So star number one would have a different name, image index and position and alive status etc etc. So that is the basic idea, let's continue. Now to make this abundantly clear, currently we have five star variables that I want to go for. There are gonna be many many more but that's just the, the beginning, right? And we have, let's go with a little bit more, let's go with 60 stars just to show you that it is actually dynamic. So now I want to make a little variable that is actually not really necessary but I just want to have it stored right here. So as soon as we add more star variables I can simply change this number. So what are our star variables? First of all we have the name number. So it's going in order from 0 to 60 or on 59. 
Then next up, I want to save the image index. I want to save the X position and the Y position and also the alive status. So those are, are gonna be our five stats to save. Next up, I want to initialize a global variable called star grid and also a global variable called star names or let's call it star name list to be abundantly clear that it is gonna be a list. Okay, now we're gonna create the actual star grid and you have to know this is actually using up memory. So whenever you don't need a grid or a list anymore, you have to remove them again. But more to that later. Let's say star grid equals to ds grid create. And now we have to specify the grid size. So if you remember, our grid is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in width and the height in stars, so 60 stars. So let's first define the width, which is our little star variables variable, and the height is gonna be the global.stars amount that we have in our global variable script. And now I want to change that. So we spawn instead of 51 stars, we're gonna spawn 60 stars. So the grid now has a size and we want to populate it with values. Since we are still in the initializing phase, let's also initialize the list. So star name list equals ds list create and it is not requiring anything in the brackets here. So it's just a blank and empty list. Okay, now for further convenience, I'm going to add another section called grid values and let's say it's the column values, right? So that means if we have a look at this graphic again, I want to have these things saved. So for instance, the star number is always going to be the first column, then the index is going to be the second column, etc, etc. And if at any point I want to exchange these guys, all I have to change is the grid values section here and otherwise we're going to use the variables we are defining right now. So to make this abundantly clear, we're gonna call one variable star name number and it's gonna be the zero column. Then the image index is gonna be column one of our grid. Then the X position is gonna be column two. The Y position is gonna be column three. And finally, a life status is gonna be column four. So if I want to add more values to that, I can simply do that. And instead of the numbers here, we are from now on gonna use the variables. Good, now we have our grid and our list ready. Depending on whether the player continues the game or starts a new game, we now have to go a different route. With a new game, we want to populate the grid and the list. And with the load game functionality, we want to load the grid and the list from a file and assign the values to the stars. So let's do the new game section first. If global.newGame equals true, then we want to do something, namely for star index. And that is just a variable that I'm choosing right now. Uh, usually you go only for one letter, but in this case, I want to go for star index. It basically just means which star, is it the eighth star in our grid list or so? So it's basically the row of the grid and we start with zero the star index as long as it is smaller than the ds grid height and of course that currently is 60 but it can change so we are just going to go with that variable and we have to define the grid of course it's the height of our star grid and as long as it is smaller than that we want to add to the star index there we go so now we have created our for loop and now we have to add all of the values we want to add to the grid. So let's start with the star names. I'm gonna call this add star names. And what we want to do is first of all, run a random name generator. Oh yes. So this is a script that I've also made in between the episodes. It's just a first version of random names, but it's actually pretty cool. And we're gonna do that in the next episode. However, for now, we're just gonna run the script and rest assured, it is just creating a random name between three and eight letters. Good, within that script, I'm actually generating a variable called a name temp. So what we want to do is uh, bring this variable into here. I'm just gonna say random name equals global name temp. Okay, this step is not really necessary. I could just use this variable throughout this script, but I'm more comfortable bringing the variable into a local one. 
Now we want to populate the grid with this variable. So this is the zeroth star. It's the first one, right? So we can say DS grid set, or you can also say add. I'm actually not sure what the difference is, but we're just gonna do set. We want to set something within the star grid. That is the idea. Now we have to say the X position and the Y position. So for instance, if we have a look at that, the star number right here would be zero. It's actually not the name. This would be one, this would be two, etc, etc. This is our first column, right? So for instance, the index of our star one right here could be four. And this would be the coordinates two, two, right? No, actually the coordinates one, one, of course, because we start with zero. So one and one right here. Those are our coordinates for this image index. So let's try to do this dynamically. The X position for the name is of course gonna be the variable we defined on the top. So star name number, this is what we want to go for. It's the zero column that we are going through here with the names. Now, by the way, the reason I'm not saving the random name is, as I said, because we cannot load in strings into the grid. I just couldn't do it. So what I want to do is actually save the names in a list. However, the Y position is of course gonna be the star index. It's just going through from zero to 60. And then finally, the value is gonna be our random name, of course. No, actually, that is a lie. I want to set it to star index, right? So with that, we basically number the stars from zero to 60 in the first column. And it's one star per row. So maybe let's tend to the list first. Um, DS list create, no, DS list add, I guess. We want to add to the star name list and we want to add the random name. And because we are doing it at the same time with this step here, it's also going to be saved in the same order. So the star in the grid position 7 is also going to have the same name as the position 7 on the list. Now, thinking about it, I'm not even sure if we require this step. Maybe it's enough just to create the list because it's gonna be in the same order as the grid stars anyways, right? So it doesn't really matter to set this. But just to be sure, we're gonna leave it. Okay, let's continue with the image index. We want a random image index, uh, which is gonna be something between zero and nine. So floor random global dot star sprites total, which is a variable I defined in the global variable script. Next up, we want to also add that to our DS grid. So the grid star grid, and we want to have the X position, which is image index, something I defined above. Then the star index is the Y position in the grid and the value, of course, the random image index. And here we can do this and add it directly to the grid because it is already a numerical value. Let's go with X position next, add X positions. Um, random X is gonna be equal to 100 plus random room width minus 200 there we go and let's also add that to the grid we want to add it to the star grid the x position and the star index rand x i hope you now understand what is going on here add y positions there we go random y is going to be equal to the same thing as above room height though ds grid set star grid we want the y position we want the star index and the random y is the value we want to save in the grid. Okay, what else is missing? I think the alive status. Um, you know, once we create all the stars newly, everything is gonna be alive. So what we can do is just set it. Uh, DS grid set uh, star grid. We want to set the alive value, which is our fourth position, our fourth column. The Y would be also the star index. And we want to set this to one, which is the same as true. Okay, well now with one for loop, we accomplish the same thing as we did uh, with a bunch of for loops in the other script. It was a mess. What we can do now is basically prepare the star variables. So I want to have some of my variables uh, set to global variables so that I can use them with uh, with functionality. 
So we are going to basically need uh, all the variables. For instance, we need the star index, which is the, the currently numbered star. So for instance, the first one would be zero, then one, two, etc., etc. We also want to globally save a temp star name, which is going to be equal to random name. Then we want a global temp image index, which is going to be equal to the rand image index we set above. Then we want a global temp x position, which is going to be equal to rand x. And finally, global temp y position, rand y. Great, okay, let's ship them over, uh, let's say, transfer values. Now I'm gonna set a variable which is gonna be equal to instance create zero zero object star. So we're basically gonna spawn a star at zero zero and then we add all of these values to the star and therefore we're gonna create 60 stars with a different image index, a different name, etc, etc. Now since I created the instance with a variable, I can simply address it with this variable like so and it will always function. So don't add Add obj star in here otherwise it's gonna do it with all of the stars and just mess up everything so first of all what do we want to add we want to add the star name so we're gonna set that self star name equals global dot temp star name we also want to set the image index I guess which is gonna be image speed equals zero and image index equals global dot temp image index Next up, we want to set the position. So we want to set x equals global temp x pass and y equals global temp y pass. There we go. Finally, the alive status is something we should do, which is self alive equal true, right? No, we should set it to the same thing. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter actually, because in the beginning with the new game functionality, the alive status is just true. That only comes into play once we load the game. So now as a last step, outside of our for loop, which should be right here, I guess. Let's check this out. Yeah, the for loop starts here. So we want to make sure we are outside of that. We want to save this grid and the list. And for that, we have to open an ini file. I'm gonna call this star grid uh, dot ini, I guess. And what we want to do is ini write a string. We want to save this grid in a string. It's not gonna be readable with our human eyes, but we're gonna do the best to make use of it. So what do we want to do? We want to add a section, which is basically a title. I'm gonna title this, for instance, star grid, something like that. That is gonna be our title. Title. Then we want to add a key, which is basically a, a section with a section or a category of the section. And I'm just gonna call this key or let's maybe call it grid. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't really matter to me. Last but not least, what we want to do is use the dsgrid write functionality, which basically converts your grid into a string. So that is good. And the ID, of course, is star grid. We want to make this into a string and save it under the title title star grid with the grid key. Next up, we also want to add another section for our list. So I'm gonna write a new string also in the same category, but this time I'm gonna have a new key called names and we are gonna go ahead and get our list write star name list. Simple as that. Last but not least, what we want to do is close off the ini file so that it is being saved. And now I think what we should be able to do is run the game and just test this out very briefly. Oh, I just realized I made a little mistake here. Of course, this was supposed to be added star. So let's do this again. There we go. I click the new game button and you can see a bunch of stars and also they all have their random names generated. For instance, here we have uh, Seiku, we have Red, we have Oye, we have Wab, we have Semquick, we have A. Yokuam. Uh, there are still a few improvements I can do with that, but it is a good start actually. I'm still probably gonna end up using your guys' suggestions in some way or the other, so don't worry about that, but I was also curious about how to create a random name generator. 
Now, in case you're curious, the file gets actually saved within the app data local and then your project name as a folder. And in here, I find my star grid ini. And if we have a look in here, you can see we have the star grid as a title, then the names as a key, and there is also the string. And last but not least, the grid as a key which is also a string that we cannot really decipher as a human, but it can be used again by GameMaker. So we are already done with the new game functionality. Let's also do the load game, which is if global.newGame equals false, then we want stuff to happen. We want to load the grid and the list first of all, so we are not gonna populate it with random values, but we're gonna load in the values we had before. For that we want to open the ini file star grid dot ini and close that off. We want to instead of write, we want to use the grid read functionality. And of course the ID is gonna be star grid and then we want as a string, we want the ini read string. So you cannot just load in the string, you have to read it from the ini file. And of course the ini file we have to set up uh, similar as above here. So we want to first define the section, which is star grid, and I want to make sure it's the same writing as before. Then the key is gonna be grid. And as a default value, we just want to have an empty string in here for some reason. There we go. Good. Let's do the same thing with the list. We want to DS read list uh, from the star name list and it's going to be any read string. So we basically want to populate the list with the values we had before, which is from the star grid section and it is the names key and we want a default value of nothing. There we go. Now we loaded in both of these lists. Let's make sure we close the any file once again because we don't need it. Now we want to transfer the values just like we basically did up here. So it's going to be something similar. Let's also create a for loop for that. And we're going to use the same index, the star index equals zero. And as long as, oh man, my writing star index is smaller than uh, the DS grid height of the star grid then we want to add to the star index plus plus there we go good let's set all of the temp variables once again for instance the star index is going to be equal to star index just like that hmm Maybe not all of these variables are necessary, but what you're gonna do? Temp star name is gonna be DS list find value. So we basically now check for all of the names. We want to find out which name belongs to which star. And for that, we want to search from the star name list. There we go. And the position is gonna be the star index. So it's basically going through the stars in order. Next up, we want the global temp image index to be equal to ds grid get star grid and uh, it's gonna be the image index that we need as an x position and we need the star index as a y position so this will give us the value from the grid we just loaded in then global dot temp x position is going to be equal to ds grid get we want from the star grid the uh, x position and from the star index y value etc etc so there we go the star name we loaded in from the star list and everything else we loaded in from the grid because everything else is a real number now that we have that, let's create the stars. So we want added star instance create and we want added star. There we go. We want to do something with that. First of all, the image index we want to set to uh, image speed equals zero and image index equals global dot temp image index yeah you know what thinking about it this transfer values thing can really go outside of here because it's basically the same thing i'm gonna do the same exact thing so i'm just gonna copy this out i'm gonna cut it out rather and outside of all of these perimeters right here i'm going to set this now okay i just see we need to have it within the for loop so i have to do it twice basically 
Anyways, uh, the, we did the image index. Let's do the star name. I actually want to do this in the opposite order just to be a little bit more consistent. So self star name is going to be equal to global dot temp star name. And we took that from our list. Then after the image index, we want to set the position x equals global dot temp x pause and y equals global dot temp y pause and finally the alive status self alive equals global dot temp alive there we go and of course if it is not alive it's gonna destroy itself also i still have on the stars on the single star object that i have on the draw event i have to draw self and also the text to show the names. There we go. Last but not least, we need to do a little cleanup because of course we're using up memory as long as we have these lists and grids loaded. Therefore, I want to DS grid destroy and we want to destroy the uh, star grid. Next up, I also want to DS list destroy and the list is gonna be star name list. And last but not least, we want to set the global new game to equal to false. There we go, guys. Great. I think we, we basically did it. It's time to test the game. So here we are in the startup room. Let's click the new game and you can see all of the stars are uh, distributed. We should have 60 stars in here. All of them have a different name. Now let's remember this star. It's the RWO and it is yellow. Now I'm gonna restart the game and instead of new game we're gonna click continue. Let's do that and oh no! Look at that. I made a mistake right here. This is a spelling mistake so at least that is out of the way. Let's see if that was the only reasoning behind the star names. It might be. So new game again. At this time we're gonna remember the Oxney star which has a brown color. Let's reset the room and continue. And look at that. It's still the Oxnia star with the brown color. So we successfully did what we wanted to accomplish. Holy Moses, guys. So this video took me 50 minutes to do. And now I have to edit this down to a consumable length. Let's try it again. Uh, continue. Yeah, there we go. New game and everything changed. Beautiful. Great. Okay. In the next episode, we're going to do the random name generator. It is actually pretty fun. But with that out of the way, let's finally wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great time and see you soon. Bye bye.